one thing that may trouble you if you look at the regression is that they have a very low r squared and for example here for the OLS intention to treatment effect the r square of 0 0.002 means that only 0.2 percent of the variation in our dependent variable whether a job was found after six months can be explained by the regression and also for the IV regression and here uh, this um, Bias or less regression, we have a very low R squared, 0 0.004. On the other hand, we found a relatively strong treatment effect in our IV regression. Yeah, recall this coefficient of 0 0.1 means actually uh, that um, the intensive job counseling treatment increases um, the probability to find a job by roughly 50%. So, is this somehow weird? to have such a strong treatment effect, but such a low R squared? Or is it maybe natural because our dependent variable is just a 0, 1 dummy variable to have such a low R squared? To understand it better, let's run a simulation in R. Here is the simulation code. We have n equal to 10,000 observations. We have some true coefficients beta 1 and beta 0. Then um, Treated shall be uh, the dummy, whether a um, subject is treated or not. We don't have an instrumental variable setting, so here treated is perfectly exogenous. Uh, so we have uh, 10,000 zeros or ones, and the probability is one half, one half for each uh, uh, value of zero and one. And then prop success shall be the probability of a success. So in the setting whether a job was found and that shall be a very simple formula it shall be just this uh, beta zero let's say 20 percent as we have found in our control group plus beta one times treated uh, where beta one is 0 0.1 so it means if a subject was, was treated it has a, a 10 percentage points higher probability of a success to find the job uh, and 10 percentage points is basically 50 percent of this um, baseline probability of 20 percent so uh, this code generates our dependent variable y, which is also a dummy variable, and you could think that's whether a job has been found or not. Um, so what what I do here is I, I draw basically n um, to, to generate this code. I, I draw n uniform random variables between zero and one, and I check whether this value is smaller than the probability of success. So here I get a true and false. So it's basically um, um, true means um, we, we would have a, a success and I multiply it by, by a 1. This 1L means it shall be an integer number. This L is not so important. And I get 0 and 1. So basically I had a 1 if this random number was smaller than the probability of success. And we, we, we find basically, um, maybe let's make a, a data frame, data frame y treated and uh, some dplyr command we say group um, group by uh, treated and then we let's summarize um, summarize um, oh just mean of y and i need to load the package dplyr for this to work so we basically we find by by this procedure that's indeed for the um in our simulated sample, for those who were not treated, the average value of the dependent variable is, is 20%, and for those who are treated, the average value is 30%. So, um, kind of did what I wanted to do, even so maybe this R code may on the first side look a little bit not familiar for you. And uh, now I also want to regress why untreated, so um, because here the treatment is completely exogenous, we don't have to worry about instrumental variable regression, we can just run this OLS regression. And um, so we, we estimate basically an effect uh, for treated, which is roughly around the true effect, maybe a bit far away, it's 0 0.9. Maybe let's run it again with uh, 100,000 observations to have more precise estimators. Um, yeah, so we are pretty close now um, to the true effect 0.1. Uh, it's also uh, very significant small standard error. So this looks kind of like the effect sizes we have in our regression, but still also here we have a very low um, R squared. Yeah, so it's only uh, 0.01. So 
See, so we also only explain one point, just 1.3 percent of the variation in the y. So this means, even so, I kind of like in the simulation, we have really we know how it was simulated. We know that the two beta one is 0 0.1, so that we have kind of a strong treatment effect. It's 50 percent of the baseline. Um, uh, we increase the probability of success by 50% of the space and probability, but still we have the small R squared. And though this just seems to be a, a feature of the fact that uh, we have uh, the zero one outcome. So there's still a lot of variation. So even if the probability of a success increases by 10%, uh, given that we only observe for each subject a success or not, a zero or one, it still seems to be the case that we have just very low R squares. Yeah, so but what it actually means is that, that a low R squared that is not necessarily a problem. It, it depends on the sort of your data set. So for some data sets in particular, these data sets where our outcomes is on an individual le level and a dummy variable, zero one for success or not, it seems quite naturally that our regressions have a, a small R squares, even if we have relatively strong effects of some treatment. So I would say we don't have to worry about the small R squares that we have observed in our um, regression in the uh, job counseling example.